What is going on you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video and today let's talk about the Denver Nuggets. I am a little bit concerned of what the future in Denver is going to be this season. Not so much the regular season. I think they will still be a top four seed, a top two seed, if not the number one seed in the Western Conference because they have Jokic, they have Murray, they have MPJ, they have Aaron Gordon. They have a great top four unit that is going to be a fantastic regular season team. But what I am concerned about is I don't think they did enough, and I actually think they got a little bit worse, at least for right now. I don't think they have enough to fix what happened this past season. Losing in the second round to the Timberwolves, not making it to the Western Conference Finals, and not making it back to the Finals. I don't think they did enough to fix what their problems were last season. And now, the Western Conference, that was already competitive, got even better. The Thunder got much better, in my opinion, and also got a year of experience in the playoffs under their belt. And same thing for the Timberwolves, making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. They had a fantastic season and gained a lot of experience along the way as well. And those are the two best teams in the Western Conference. And then, of course, the Western Conference champions, also in this conversation, the Mavericks. They also got better this offseason. And then there's the Nuggets, who, like I started the video with, I don't think they got much better this offseason. If anything, they got worse. And why do I say that? Well, let's start off with not this not this offseason currently, but the offseason prior. They win the championship. Bruce Brown gets a bag. He leaves to go to Indiana. That's one guy from your championship core. That's gone. This, this offseason, currently, KCP, they didn't want to pay him. He got a little bit of a bag to go to the Orlando Magic. He is gone. And they don't replace either of those holes. What they do have is they have a lot of good young guys, supposedly good young guys, on the bench, but we don't really know how good they will be. I really focused a lot of time watching their summer league because Julian Strother played two summer league games and he averaged the most points in this year's summer league. He averaged around 28 points per game in just two games. The Nuggets were like, we saw enough. You killed two games. You can sit the rest of summer league or just go on vacation, whatever. So Julian Strother, can he be a key factor to this team? Can Christian Brown be a key factor to this team? Now, he has been in rotations ever since his rookie year. He earned a spot in, a, in the rotation his rookie season, so good for him. But still, he's not some premier scorer. He's not some, some premier playmaker. He's just a solid complimentary piece. He's like a good ninth or 10th guy, but he's not a good starting player in this league. As of now, he's their projected starting shooting guard. On top of that, Peyton Watson, Another young guy who is going to be getting a lot of minutes. Another major major question mark on this team. Now, last season he got some run, but still didn't show me enough to where he could be the seventh guy in this rotation. They did bring in Dario Saric. That's a solid pickup because they didn't really have a backup center. Sadly, they lost to Ron Holmes in summer league. He went down with an injury. He's out all this coming season. He was supposed to be their backup big. That was a good that was a good draft pick, and he looked really good in the three or four games he played in summer league. So that is a big hit. That was not really the Nuggets' fault, but that does hurt. But still, they have Dario Sarch and DeAndre Jordan. That those are their backup centers, and Zeke Naji, of course. So Zeke Naji, Dario Sarch, and DeAndre Jordan. None of them should be on an NBA court more than ten or twelve minutes a game. And for Really, DeAndre Jordan, he should never touch an NBA court because he's just old. Not that he's, you know, terrible, but that's he's old. He's, he's turning into a Udonis Haslam. He doesn't need to be playing. And then that leads to what now will probably be their best bench player in Russell Westbrook. I love Brody. He's one of my favorite players. Where can I move? He's one of my favorite players of all time. He is my favorite player or was my favorite player growing up until a man named Shea Gilgis Alexander came to the Thunder and I really started to like him as well. But I still love Brody. I still have a deep fandom for Russell Westbrook. But this is not, you know, this Westbrook. 
Thunder Westbrook or Rockets Westbrook or Wizards Westbrook, which needs to be talked about more. He was a monster in Washington. Point being, this is not the same Westbrook. And I think this, I think this move for the Nuggets getting Brody is fantastic. I think it was a need they needed to fill. In a summer league interview before the whole Brody thing transpired and he ended up in Denver, head coach Mike Malone was like, we need a backup point guard. Because out of all the names I listed before I got to Brody, none of them were point guards. Not one of them. They're all wings, you know, two guards, power forward centers. They didn't have one backup point guard. But luckily, they did fix that, bringing in Russell Westbrook. And I think he'll be fantastic for this team. So I've no, I know I've been down on the Nuggets, but Brody is a huge, huge pickup. They needed a backup point guard. They needed someone to back up Jamal Murray. If Jamal Murray goes down, Russell Westbrook can slide into that starting point guard role and be serviceable. I think he will give you, you know, 10, 5, and 5, 8, 5, and 5, something like that. And he also will pick up the load they lose with losing KCP. KCP was their best stealer last season, averaged around two steals a night. They lose that with KCP walking, and they do lose his three-point shooting ability. That is something that Brody can't provide, but he can provide fantastic defense and pick up the slack now that KCP is gone. But they do lose a major perimeter shooter in KCP. Someone that Jokic could drive and kick to or just, you know, toss it out to, do some crazy Jokic pass to KCP. They don't have that anymore. Now, of course, MPJ is great at that. Aaron Gordon is pretty good at that. Jamal Murray is pretty good at that. But still, why not have as many guys as possible around Jokic who can hit a three? So I'll be a little bit concerned seeing Westbrook and Jokic on the court at the same time together. Because Westbrook can't space the floor. Jokic, of course, can space the floor. But obviously, he'll be running the offense. It's kind of like what happened on the Lakers. Westbrook just got demoted. And on the Clippers in the back end of the season, which made no sense to me, he got put in the corner when that's not his game. Westbrook needs the ball. He needs to be able to run the offense, run the flow. And obviously with Jokic, that's not going to happen. Because every time we've seen on the Lakers and at moments in the Clippers, I don't know why they did that anyways, but or on either side, they'd put Brody in the corner. And that's not his game. He's not going to hit a three like that. Not consistently. I just hope that doesn't happen in Denver for Westbrook because then we're going to have the same problems he's had his past two teams. Really in LA, that was the major, or I guess they were both LA, but really on the Lakers, that was where, that's when it was really noticed. There's putting him in the corner. That was some of the worst schemes I've ever seen in my life. So I will be a little bit concerned of Jokic and Westbrook on the court together at the same time. But overall, they needed, they needed a backup point guard. This was one of the best case scenarios. Tyus Jones, he went on a cheap contract to the Suns. He chose not to go to Denver on a cheap deal. But again, great move getting a good backup point guard. So I respect that. But that leads me back to my concerns. This bench is just so unknown. Right now, there, we'll just jump to the starting rotation. And we'll jump into the bench because obviously it's all connected. Right now, their starting rotation looks like Jamal Murray. And of course, this is just projected. Who really knows? But it's Jamal Murray, Christian Brown, NPJ, Aaron Gordon, and Jokic. Again, Murray, NPJ, Aaron Gordon, Jokic. Fantastic starting five. Championship level starting five. But they lose Bruce Brown. They lose KCP the year after that. And now they're putting Christian Brown at that starting two guard position. I just don't know if he's good enough to be a starting two guard. Now, could everything I'm saying right now not matter? Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, and Julian Strother just take huge leaps and play amazing. Absolutely, and I hope that does happen. I hope that 28 points per game Julian Strother average in Summer League turns into 12, 15 points per game in an actual NBA season. I hope so, and I hope everything I say is wrong. But you're relying and putting a lot of faith in young guys who aren't extremely proven to play tons of tons of minutes. And this is not the first time I said it. I said it coming into the playoffs for the Nuggets. That was one of my concerns, and it proved to be true. But they just didn't have enough to finish the job because they had a lot of young guys on that roster who just weren't ready to contribute at that high of a level. So that is a concern. Christian Brown is your starting two guard. Again, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope he takes a leap. But there's just so many unknowns there. Now going to the bench. Of course, your sixth man is Brody. I love that. I like that. That's a perfect role for him. Like I said, I'm a little bit concerned about him and Jokic on the court together, but I'm sure they'll make it work. I just hope Westbrook doesn't get demoted to the corner because then that spacing will look just disgusting. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge if it gets there. We'll talk about that at a later date. But as a pure sixth man, I like it. 
But then you have Julian Stra Strother, who played fantastic in Summer League. I like that a lot. They have Peyton Watson. I like him as well, but again, there's a lot of unknowns there. And then the projection after that is Hunter Tyson, who played 18 games last season and averaged 1.1 points per game. And now he's going to be your 10th man in your rotation. Those are the type of things I'm concerned about. And also Jalen Pickett, who played around 30 games last season for the Nuggets. In Summer League, they gave him all the minutes in the world to prove maybe he could be the backup point guard of the future. And he, he kind of flopped. I mean, he really did flop. He averaged around three and a half points per game on 25 minutes. He played, you know, around the fourth, fifth most minutes out of everyone on that Summer League roster. And he did not pr produce to the level I'm sure the Nuggets want to see. Obviously, they got Brody, so that fixes that issue. But again, it, it leads back to the fact that they were trying, or they are still trying to rely on a lot of young guys to pick up a load that we don't know if they really can produce at that level. And then, of course, your backup big is Dario Saric, Zeke Naji, DeAndre Jordan. And then after those guys is Chanchar, who really should be a little bit higher on the depth chart, but he missed all last season with a knee injury. So who knows how good he'll be coming back this season. There are so many, as you can tell, question marks on this Denver Nuggets team. And then you have two-way get two -way guys like Trey Alexander, PJ Hall. If I believe, if I'm correct, yeah, Trey Alexander had a fantastic summer league. He averaged around 18 points a night, shot the ball really efficiently. He played five summer league games. So I believe that is pretty much all the summer league games. He played fantastic in summer league. PJ Hall did all right, around 12 points a night. But do they bring up someone like Trey Alexander? Is he someone the Nuggets look to give an opportunity to? Bring him up on his two-way contract, give him, give him some run, try to find a good spark off the bench and maybe transition that into a fully guaranteed contract later next season. That's where the Nuggets are at, in my opinion. To really conclude this, Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, Julian Strother, they're the main question marks of this team after the top four guys, we know who they are. If they can produce and if they can take major leaps or pretty good leaps, everything I said today doesn't matter and it's really not a concern. But if they look about the same as last year or just take minimal leaps, there's a concern there because the guys after that, Chanchar, Major question mark coming back from knee injury. Will he even be good? Will, how long will it take him to ramp back up to be a solid rotational piece? And then you have to maybe look at two-way guys like a Trey Alexander. Do they bring him up? See if he can be a big production piece off the bench. That's where the Nuggets are at, in my opinion. So that is all I have for you guys today. And what is your opinion on the Denver Nuggets offseason and the outlook as we head to next season? Because like I said, I think they will still be a great regular season team. They have Jokic, they have Jamal Murray, they have MPJ, they have Aaron Gordon, but specifically they have Jokic, and he's going to do all he can to make other guys around him look way better than they really are. Not Murray or MPJ or Aaron Gordon, but those the other bench guys I've talked about, he's going to make them look really good. But the other guys have to make their shots. They have to play defense. So that, again, how, what do you think about this Denver Nuggets situation? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you guys very soon. Like always, peace out.